Obamacare, through the individual mandate, seeks to force us to do something, to pay for something against our will. That's never really happened under uh, Commerce Clause legislation. This is tectonic. As if they can not only prohibit us from doing things, you know, you can't dance, that's one thing. But then also saying, you gotta dance, that's a whole nother thing. You know, that's like, you know, in the old Western where they're phew, phew, dance, bang, bang, bang at their feet, and you're oh, okay, whoo, and all that. I mean, this is where we're come to. You know, we're, we're, some, we're like Festus in the old West, and you know, the, the big bully with his six-shooter is, you know, making Festus dance. This is what's gonna happen if the Supreme Court upholds individual mandate. Huge, and the justices know it. I uh, listened to uh, the three days of the oral argument. I read the transcript of that. I read a lot of uh, cases. Uh, most uh, federal cases have up, 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 upheld the individual mandate and Obamacare leading up to all this. There's only been a couple. I think it was the 11th Circuit that, that uh, uh, turned it down. But most federal courts think this is okay, think that the feds have the right to make you do something. And their rationale is this. It's very clever. It's not right, but it's still clever. It says, we're human beings. We're all going to be sick at some day in our life, okay? You're going to buy healthcare products or services someday in your life. That's a given. Ready, ready, ready. You know, saying that I'm not buying insurance because, you know, I'm healthy and I provide for my own, uh, you know, diet and exercise and healthcare and all that. Yeah, that may be true for a while, but someday you'll get sick or you'll break a leg or whatever. Then you're going to come crying to us, the insurance you know, uh, part of things, and you're going to pay higher costs because you haven't been funding this whole thing all along. So we're going to make you get in the market now. We're going to make you, you're already in the market. You're, we're just going to make you realize that you're in the market now by forcing you to pay, you know, is it $1,400 or something like that a year for, for the basic package, as if that price will stay static. Um, you're already in the healthcare market just by being alive, apparently. And, you know, the rationale of, of, of this is by being alive, you affect interstate commerce theoretically, right? You know, if, if I die tomorrow, interstate commerce is affected by point zero 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 whatever. You know, the same for every, every one of us. So these justices know that, that, that this is a real fork in the road constitutionally regarding the Tenth Amendment and the Commerce Clause. They know this is huge. Um, I think they've got basically, basically got four and four, four liberals on one side, uh, Ginsburg just was, was, was panting over, you know, wanting to pass this in the oral uh, briefing. It was just silly. Well, wouldn't you agree that it has this? You know, it's just baiting the attorney general. Um, four justices, conservative side, um, probably do not want this. Obviously, Thomas doesn't. Scalia is very antagonistic against it. Roberts and Alito. The swing vote, this is the most empower, powerful person in the country uh, within the next few days, is probably Justice Kennedy. He's known to be the centrist, and he swings both ways. He's the bisexual, you know, constitutional justice out there. He goes both ways. You know, whoever shows more thigh, you know, that day he, he goes home with. So <laughs> we'll see next week who, who showed more thigh over this issue. And I, I forecast in my book, so it's, it's in print, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in print is, and going to be right or wrong about this in a week. I think probably Kennedy will swing over to the liberal side and they'll uphold uh, Obamacare, including the individual mandate. I could be wrong, and I, I hope I am in some respects, um, because if they gut individual mandate, it guts the entire Obamacare. You know, the point of an individual mandate was to force you, you look, you're young and pretty and healthy, and you know, you, you're fit and middle-aged and so forth. You may not be buying insurance because you don't need it, you know. I don't either. But uh, they're going to force us to, to get into this and pay for all the fat asses on their couches eating Doritos, watching Fox and all this other crap on TV that have a crap diet through their mind and a crap diet through their body. And we're supposed to, uh, to, to pay for these bastards, you know. I'd, I'd like to enjoy the fruits of my labor and the money that I make and the health that I've earned through denying myself of all the goodies and Krispy Kreme donuts and, you know, 20 hours of TV watching on the couch. I'd like to enjoy that. And I don't want these goddamn parasites on my back anymore. So. But the parasites don't want to give up. And they have four and maybe five allies on the Supreme Court. Okay, and we're going to know next week about this. 
If they do uphold individual mandate, I will be wrong technically, but that will be very interesting for the, for the future of liberty and resistance in this country. I think a lot of states will try to nullify that, okay? They've tried to, uh, through the Firearm Freedoms Acts, basically nullify ATF regulation through the Commerce Clause, and I think they're going to try to nullify the individual mandate if it's upheld. 